We still don't have flying cars, but we do finally have virtual reality, starting with the Oculus Rift. After its Kickstarter campaign in 2012, a surprise acquisition by Facebook, and several developer headsets, Oculus has finally delivered its consumer edition of the Rift for $600. It's much lighter and easier to wear than any of the previous headsets, thank goodness, and it has built-in headphones. The Rift headset is basically a big container for two OLED displays, one for each eye, running at 1200 by 1080 pixels at 90 hertz. Altogether, it's pushing 233 million pixels per second. Setting up the Oculus Rift was easier than I expected, especially after dealing with the headache of the second development kit. You just have to plug in the headset into a USB 3.0 port and HDMI port, and then plug in the standing sensor into a USB 3 port. There's a quick configuration process with the Oculus app, which should be simple enough for most people to handle. You might have to upgrade your video card drivers though to get everything set up. Oculus also includes an Xbox One controller and a wireless adapter, which plugs into any USB port. That's your main gaming controller. The fancy looking Oculus Motion controllers are sold separately and won't be available until later this year. There's also a small Oculus Remote bundled, which thankfully has a layout that you can easily use to change the volume and select options when your eyes are covered with the display. The Rift has straps on the side as well as the top to make it comfortable on your head. It took a few days, but I was eventually able to fit it over my glasses in just a few seconds. It still takes my glasses with it though whenever I take it off. Once I could wear it comfortably, I was able to have the Rift on for around an hour at a time. Yes, you get sweaty eventually, and your eyes get a bit fatigued. It almost feels like a clockwork orange. Your eyes are just held open a bit more than usual. You can always remove the headphones and attach your own, but they actually sounded pretty good for over-the-ear headphones. It's also pretty cumbersome to wear additional headphones whenever you're wearing a VR headset. I think most people will be fine with Oculus's built-in headphones. The Oculus app is your main entry point for finding and installing games and apps, and also dealing with your friends list. Yes, this is a Facebook company, don't forget. Even at this early point, there are already a few standouts on the Oculus store. Eve Valkyrie let me live out my dream of being a starship fighter in exotic galactic locations. It's honestly the most immersive space shooter I've ever played. The graphics are rich and detailed, and even though I'm playing it with an Xbox One controller, it still plays just fine. But what really makes it special is that I can just turn my head and follow my enemies in the middle of a dogfight, or just turn and look at the grandeur of the environments. You won't be able to replicate that sort of experience on your TV or even a projector with a very big screen. If you're looking for something a little more classic, Lucky Tale is a charming platformer in the vein of Mario. It plays a lot like those games, but the real draw is the VR perspective of the worlds. It's a third-person camera, but you're free to look around the environments and just absorb the detail. You can even lean in and get a closer look at individual characters and elements of the environments. Lucky Tale is a great example of how VR games won't just be about first-person gaming. There are also entertainment experiences like Oculus Video, which lets you browse a wide variety of 360-degree videos, as well as other videos in virtual environments. Oculus says there will be 30 games launching with the Rift, which is more than you see with typical console gaming launches these days. At $600, the Oculus Rift is about the cost of a high and video card. This is the sort of thing PC gamers are used to paying for, so they're the most likely market right now. To power such a hefty display, you also need some beefy hardware, at least an Intel i5-4590 or equivalent CPU, 8GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GTX 970, or an AMD Radeon 290 video card. To make things easier for newcomers, there are also a handful of Oculus-ready PCs starting at around $1,000 from companies like Alienware, Asus, and Dell. If you were building by hand, you could probably configure a minimum specification computer for around the $600. But of course, those prices don't include monitors, which will run you at least another $200. In comparison, the HTC Vive is $800, but it requires similarly powerful hardware. That also comes with two motion controllers, though. We still don't know when the Oculus motion controllers will be available or what they'll cost. There's also the PlayStation VR for $400, but that requires a PS4 and additional accessories to work. And honestly, it just doesn't have the same fidelity as PC grade VR. Overall, I'm impressed with the experience Oculus has developed here. The hardware is comfortable and it works well, and it's building up an ecosystem of games and apps pretty quickly. But the Oculus Rift definitely isn't meant for mainstream consumers yet. If you don't have a gaming PC ready to go, it's not worth investing all that many just for your Oculus. Perhaps next year, when there are more games, experiences, and slightly cheaper hardware, VR will finally be something for everyone. But if you can afford it, VR is here right now.